So Mark, here we are again. Today we're talking tyres. They're often referred to as the dark art. Why is that? Well, it, it is a little bit because it's uh, the reason for it is there's so many variables involved in getting these things right and, and making them work for you. They, they vary so much by uh, things like temperature, by pressure, by the weather conditions, the track surface, you know, even the, uh, the sort of driving style of the, of the driver himself. So, so many things are, are variable that the engineers have a very difficult time making it the sort of exact science that they would love it to be. Right, let's go back to basics. What are they made of? Uh, well, most people would perhaps assume they're just they're rubber, uh, and the truth, I guess, is that they're not really rubber anymore. They're a, they're a combination now of, of synthetic materials, so they're a, a composite material based of uh, lots of chemical compounds, and um, you know the way that they react in terms of their, their reaction to the tarmac is crucial as to how much grip they deliver, and that's something that the teams have a bit of an input in, in switching them on, if you like, activating that chemical compound to deliver the grip. That's the biggest thing that delivers as lap time uh, and if they get it wrong of course we'll, we'll have a, a negative impact on lap time so it really is crucial. And what about on the inside of the tyres because it's not as straightforward as air is it? <laughs> No, no, so your road car tyres are all filled with air, like you say, but um, these are not, these are filled with nitrogen. And the reason we use that is because it's a much more stable gas. It has a, a, no, a lower moisture content than air. And the moisture content in air fluctuates an awful lot with, uh, with temperature. Um, Formula One engineers want to keep their tyre temperatures and their tyre pressures as stable as they can. Nitrogen allows them to do that. So I guess something that the teams have absolutely no control over are the conditions of the road and they need to pick the right tyre for the right condition. Yeah, absolutely. The tyre manufacturer provides a range of tyres uh, and of course, you know, we all know that there's wet tyres, there's dry tyres, but actually more than that, there are variables in each one. There's four different types of dry tyre, two different types of wet tyre. Um, the grooves that you can see here on the wet tyre, much like your road car, they're there to disperse the water and this year in Formula One, the new extreme wet tyre disperses up to 65 litres of water per second as the car's going around the track. It's a lot of water. Um, so that's what the wet tyre does. And if we move over to, to have a look at this, this front tyre here, this is a dry tyre or a slick tyre. The teams have four different types of these, four different compounds, and they're for use at different tracks, uh, different weather conditions, circuit conditions. Now it's a key decision that the teams have to make as to which one they have on the car at, at, at which time, and it can make the difference between having grip on the car and not. You have to remember that this is the contact point between the car and the track. It's the only thing that's going to increase or decrease grip between the two. So it's a real key part of the, uh, the setting up of the car, a real key decision for the teams to, to make as to which one they choose. So apparently in 2011, 10,200 kilograms of rubber was deposited on the tracks. They must get through so many tyres. Yeah, the wear rate is phenomenal on these things. Your road car tyres might be expected to last something like 100,000 kilometres. These things are designed to last one stint of a Grand Prix, a handful of laps. So I'm not that surprised by that figure. Yeah, thank goodness my car does not go through that many tyres. Uh, once again, Mark, thank you so much for your expert knowledge. Pleasure.